imagine how everyone's going to talk about this. It was interesting to watch. I was shocked to discover that my crazy outlandish theory was in fact true, everyone. That's right. My crazy outlandish theory that I put forth when I saw the very first trailer and Eric and I reviewed it on the show <laughs> was straight up freaking, I can even just use the F word, but I'm not going to do it. It was straight up true. It actually happened. I couldn't believe it because I just pulled that out because of data painting. Oh, by the way, this is a very heavy spoiler for a conversation, everyone. If you haven't seen Picard. Hey, hey Dave, should, you, should we do some non-spoiler first? Just just do like a non-spoiler yeah, first. Yeah, let's, do, let's do a non-spoiler non first, and then okay. we'll, we'll get in, into your – because I want to talk about your prediction as well because that, that was a – that was awesome. So I, I think that, but uh, let, let, let's do some, some yeah, non-spoiler. Uh, let's do some non-spoiler first, just some general impressions. Let's, let's start there. So I, I, Alec, can you give us some, some general impressions from, from Picard non-spoiler first? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to send you this, this link here real quick for you to for you to share with everyone. But I, I, uh, I, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, you know, I, I'm a huge Star Trek fan and it was so great for me to like see that continued. Um, I, you know, I was a big fan of Logan when that came out and I just got a lot of uh, Logan vibe from the show. Um, it's, it's got the mini series. It's not the episode. It's not the ship in the bottle uh, type episode. And um, I'm excited to see where they're taking uh, the future of everything. Um, but I, I feel like I could sum up the whole episode with that one image, um, based on, uh, based on watching it. So I'm, I'm excited to see, uh, where that's going to go. Which image are you talking about? Oh, um, let's see. I don't know if I can share it in the, uh, in the live comments. I'll, I'll send it to you in a, in a private chat. Maybe you can post it in the live comments for me. You can also do uh, your share screen, and I can share your screen if you if you do the share. Oh screen. yeah, yeah, why, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and why don't you go ahead and share the screen, and then uh, I'll just. Uh... You you have to do it first, and then I then I can do it. You have to you have okay, to share your yeah. screen to me, and then I can share it. Everyone, uh, we're we're still uh, all all getting up on how the the fun streamyard uh, craziness works. <laughs> so this pretty much sums up. Uh... <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Oh, so, wow! So without there any spoilers go. or anything, I just feel like this is so representative of, of the first episode. And if if that piques your interest and you haven't watched it yet, uh, I hope that uh, this that this does. But, oh my that's lord perfect. that is perfect that, that is, is perfect absolutely that's perfect. absolutely perfect that that like sums up the entire thing to me i, I feel like i don't have to say anything the picture is literally worth a thousand words right here this is it this is it so no, that's, that, that is too funny so anyway and i i just um i i thoroughly enjoyed it and um i am i'm excited to see where it goes and uh i I believe it is a show for Star Trek fans. Um, and I'm, I've got a ton of like little Easter egg things I want to bring up later, but um, I, I, I don't, it's not JJ Abrams Star Trek for sure, which is just so great on so many levels. And um, I am pleased with how they're presenting it and I'm just enjoying the ride. Uh, you know, it's, I, I just want to enjoy the ride. that's going to be Star Trek Picard. What's your uh, what's your one out of five? Give it one out of five stars. Where are you at? Uh, I'd say I'd say four and a half, four and a half stars out of five. Four and, and I know that's a little biased, but I I, I just feel like um, with how they started it off, the pacing, everything, you know, I'm I'm, I'm feeling good uh, about this series. Right on, Dave. Very cool. Uh, well, Eric, general you, impressions. Why don't you go next, um, if you don't mind? And I'll be I don't back mind. here in just a minute. So, so I'm 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 right in the middle. I'm right in the middle. I I had the opportunity to already share my thoughts on uh, with Orville Nation, which was I had a great time with them. Uh, they've been supporters of the show the show, and they had a uh, quite a large panel, um, and they were going by a, a ten point scale, and it was interesting because we had people that were like at a two, and then we had people that were like at an eight. 
you know? So we had people all over the place in that panel uh, as far as what they thought of the first episode. Um, and I'd say that I'm right in the middle. Like if I was to, to give, it, give it a ranking of that one to five scale, I'm, I'm like literally right at the, a two and a half. Um, I, uh, I didn't hate it, um, but I didn't love it either. So it's kind of interesting for me as I'm, I'm talking to other people because I've been on other shows. I was on the, the Starfleet Underground podcast and uh, they loved it. I mean, they were just all over it. Um, so it, it's, it's been interesting for me because uh, I know people that just absolutely, absolutely hate it already, which I think it's way too soon to do that. Um, <clears throat> and then I know people that are just like, they love it. I, I, I saw uh, somebody on, on Twitter. Uh, saying that like this is the best Trek ever, and I'm like, it's one episode. You know what I mean? Even if you loved it, it's one episode. Okay, right. It's one episode of 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 a ten part uh, a ten part season, and I, and I've I've also kind of made that point to people is uh, keep in mind uh, whatever Picard is, um, it's not going to even be equal to one season of TNG uh, as far as content. Uh, it's only going to be ten episodes. Uh, it's interesting because you know Picard has already been greenlit for a second season, uh, but it's, that's going to be twenty episodes. That's still going to be less than one season of Next Generation in terms of content. So uh, for me, the, the the jury is still definitely out. There were things that I really liked, and I'm going to talk about the things I really liked. But there are also things I really disliked. And Dave knows um, I'm a big lore guy. I'm big into lore, continuity, things like that because I'm a Trekkie. I am a Trekkie, and so I get into that kind of stuff. I get into the, to, to the, the political situation of the Romulans versus the Federation and all that stuff. That, that stuff, I think it's fun. I like it. It's part of my, my personal fandom. So I get into that stuff, and there were things that I have uh, that concerned me in, in this show regarding that. Uh, but it's still it's the first episode, so I'm, I'm willing to definitely give it, give it a chance. Um, the, 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 probably what the kindest thing I can say is even if I wasn't reviewing this, for a show, I would still want to watch it. It intrigued me enough that I still want to keep watching the show, regardless if, if, if I'm doing a show reviewing it or whatever. So that's kind of where I'm at. So what about you, Dave? Um, I enjoyed the show. Um, I um, There was a lot of fun callbacks. Um, a lot like a, I liked how it kind of connected everything. And, and in overall, I enjoyed it. Um, if I was going to give it a thumbs up or a thumb down. Um, I well, would so, say not to be that just one, one, one through five, one through five stars. One through five. All right. Okay. 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 That's more, that's harder. That's why I want to do the thumbs up. <laughs> thumb <down. laughs> um, let's see. Four out of five. Um, I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. Um, uh, there's kind of some context with what's happening with, um, well, I don't want to get into spoilers, but anyhow, uh, no, I'd, I would give it a four out of five. And when we get our spoiler talk, I could I can get further into um, why I would give it a four out of five. Um, but I'd say I'd say four out of five for me. Um, I enjoyed a lot of it. It's got great production values for the most part. Uh, there's a lot of things about it I loved, um, but there were some other things that didn't kind of. Uh, sit well with me and some of it didn't quite make sense based off some of the other stuff that we've seen. Um, but overall four to five, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm ex uh, curious to watch the rest of it and, and see where they take this. Um, I hope that they have a vision and a plan um, and we don't get something sort of as muddled as I feel like the, the last three star Wars films were. Um, so I, uh, <laughs> you know, that that's my, that's my only concern because like when Patrick Stewart was on The View and he asked Whoopi to come on the show, that sounds great. I'd love to see Guinan come back. But then I'm like going, I hope that was a stunt and you've already talked to her about it and you know how it's going to work on the show. You know what I mean? Instead of just trying to shoehorn Guinan in now. That's weird. Well, you right? know, one of the concerns, you know, one of the concerns that I've had uh, from the beginning, and I still have this concern uh, very much, is that the, a lot of the legacy characters are just going to be cameos. Uh, that they're not going to be relevant to the story. Um, that's that's one of my biggest concerns. And obviously that wasn't addressed in this first episode like at all. So um, we don't know. We don't know. So that's my point with the, with the thing about like Guinan. 
uh, we don't know if she's going to be relevant or she's just going to be literally like, she's just going to be the bartender at a random bar they walked into. <laughs> right. They'll have like right. a scene or two, you know what I mean? And then that's it. And it's like, oh yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was on the show, Guyan's back, yeah, you know? Um, that's my concern uh, with the legacy characters. But but one more uh, non-spoiler thing. Uh, what'd you guys think of the, of the score? What'd you guys think of the score? Um, I like the score. I quite like the score. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's tough to, at least in, in, you know, we're talking about revamping and revisiting, uh, old IPs. I think the score, um, was more than appropriate for the show. And, um, I just feel like there were so many subtle, uh, nods to themes, to, uh, things that we remember from the movies and everything that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're just looking, I don't know. Like, I just don't want to jump the gun on any of this, but I just felt like it was, uh, it was good. It was really good. Well, I, I agree with you that it, it fits the show. Um, I think it fits the show, uh, very well. Um, but one of the things that, that, that I kind of felt was that, uh, you can tell by kind of like the theme, you know, the actual theme song and, and the, the opening that they had. So I got fooled by that a little bit. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about spoilers. But um, when you talk about the actual theme of the show and the actual theme song, for lack of a better term, um, I think it, it does fit the tone of the show. Uh, the, the only issue that I have is that it feels uh, very inward and not very outward. It's, it doesn't feel, um, it doesn't have that, that sort of soaring, uh, inspiring uh, Trek feel to me. Um, it seems more of a exploration, uh, an inner exploration than an outer exploration. Um, and that's fine if that's, you know, if, if, if that works, that's, it's, it's, it's fine. If ultimately that works, it's fine. But, you know, off the top of my head, off the bat, that's not what I usually go to watch Star Trek for. Like, I like to see, I'm not saying I, I, I don't see a character studies being done in Star Trek. It happens all the time, but ultimately they are still out there. It's always about that exploration that outward exploration that kind of sense of adventure um and to me um i feel like this show is not going to be that i feel like this show is going to be more uh introspective you know uh, more of a more of a character study if you will that kind of a thing and i think that's kind of what the mu the music reflects that, that that's kind of what the show is going to be about yeah I, I definitely agree with that and um i mean it's certainly not the optimistic bright optimistic future that um, you know we saw through so many of the shows. I mean, even even uh, Deep Space Nine, which I would consider to be the darkest of the Star Trek shows, still had some really lighthearted episodes, and was still about the exploration and about friendship and adventure and overcoming adversity and and understanding and all those things that are the pillars and tenets of Star Trek. But like this one is definitely an internal adventure, um, and so I I just I am curious to see how they're going to approach it. Um, one, one, because of the way that Star Trek has evolved, uh, you know, since Enterprise and, you know, all the Abrams movies and Discovery and everything, but also because um, Star Trek has always been reflective of the times that we live in. And if, if, if it is a mirrored reflection of, of the way things are going, are things really that bad? Are they really that dark? Are we really so like, I don't want to live on this planet anymore with, with everything. <laughs> right, right. So, so I think, I don't know. That's why I, I really think there's a lot of validity. I mean, you know, joking, but there's a lot of validity to the statement. So I don't know. I, I want to see where they're taking the journey and, and the sorts of, of uh, avenues of that exploration, that inward uh, reflection that you were talking about and see where they go with those sorts of things. So yeah, first episode, it's hard to say, you know, if I get to episode 10 and I'm like, wow, I'm super depressed. I need to watch Schindler's list as a pick me up, you know, then we'll talk <laughs> about it. then. I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be that. <laughs> so uh, before we get into our spoiler for our conversation, um, if you'll go ahead and put me on the screen here, let's go ahead and, and announce our winner if that's okay. There we go. All right. So um, for our contest, again, our our, our drawing, uh, this was one of the things that uh, we had here on the show. This, again, is an original art sketch card from Arrow Season 4. Um, I've decided to, uh, as uh, one of the hosts of the show, uh, kind of amend what we were going to do tonight. So 
Um, this one here, this original sketch card, is going to go to Patrick Whitney for his uh, lively and uh, we'll call it uh, uh, verbose uh, dialogue tonight. Um, I enjoyed reading a lot of his comments tonight. Um, and along those same lines, um, Katie, who was on earlier, you are going to get this Arrow Season 4 sketch card. This is a Speedy. Again, this is the official original um, Arrow Season 4 sketch card. And uh, and then for uh, Ronnie Shinks, I know that Ronnie is a huge Superman fan. He's also my brother. Ronnie, we're going to be sending this one to you for coming on the show and commenting. This is Superman the Legend, original Cryptozoic sketch card. Again, art by me. Um, so the contest now is officially ended. Basically, everyone who commented tonight won an original sketch card. How cool is that? There wasn't That's even awesome. a drawing. Everybody wins. Isn't that great? Uh, that unlike is, Picard, not everywhere awesome. wins in Picard. So we're, <laughs> we're about to get into that. So I want to do that before we get into the spoiler conversation. So if you haven't seen Picard, if you want to watch the show um, and not have it spoiled, um, I hope some of you will stay with us and continue to, continue to comment. But if you haven't seen it, you need to leave us. I completely understand. Um, we'll be contacting all of you to get your addresses and all that kind of fun stuff and send those out to you um, uh, probably next week. So congratulations to all our winners. Those will go out next week. That's it for a contest. And now it's time to actually to talk spoilers about Picard. So well, um, I have a, com a comment here. And he said, uh, oh, my employee Jonah also says that Next Generation was more about the characters. And, and I, I, don't, I don't dispute that, that there's a lot of character-driven Trek. I don't know if I articulated exactly what I, I wanted to mean. I, I think... I think uh, I think Alec, I think you got what I was I was trying to say, even if I kind of stumbled over my words a little bit. There's no doubt that there isn't character dri driven Trek. That that Trek doesn't have a lot of character driven moments. Um, but I think the o the overall overarching story of Trek is all about that outward exploration. So that's that's kind of how I'm trying to trying to phrase it there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so who who wants to talk about the things that they didn't really care? So, so should we start with the things we like? Or should we start with the things we didn't like? We should probably Let start me... with what we didn't like because I, I would rather I, I don't want to end on a end on, end on a high yeah, note. Yeah, yeah. Let's end on a high Raise note. The roof. Yeah, let, 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 let's let's not. Yeah, let's not be that show. Even though I'm All the right. guy that's probably like likes it the least of of our panel tonight. Um, I don't I don't want to I don't want that, that's not what I want our show to be. About, you know, <laughs> what I be mean? the nays there. Yeah. Um, so, so I was on I was on Reddit earlier, and uh, I just wanted to share this graphic uh, with you, uh, with you who are watching, and 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 you, Dave, and you, Eric, as well. So, um, I think it's completely relevant, and it just is one of those things. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work. All right? Do you see? I don't, I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna pop up. Come on. Um. Anyway, there. Yeah. The, I, I think there were. Uh, a lot of a lot of things that could have been done better and um all right do you see the screen at all there we go so i would just like to point this out <laughs> on the show that, like for reference purposes they dropped this guy's name like five or six times and he's in one episode great episode of, of season two of tng and then it's like mentioned in two other episodes and he's just like this huge linchpin of the whole series and like as you can see, clearly people are also trying to Google him and figure out what who who the hell is Bruce Maddox. So, <laughs> like, I mean, this is I, I don't know if it's fan service or or what, but I feel like it's really important to know who this character is. And Alec, Alec, if you want to know who this character is, we did a lead up to Picard, and okay, we talked okay. about Measure of a Man. We actually did a review of Measure of a Man. Fantastic. So I refer you back to our previous episode if you want to know anything about Maddox. We did talk about him in our review of Measure of a Man. Fantastic. So for everyone who didn't watch that or had like was like, oh, Picard's on, let's just watch this, and still has no idea what's going on, clearly it's it's one of those things that is important to the story, but not – like I guess if you missed it, it's not the end of the world. But if there's going to be more references like that, hopefully it doesn't detract from the storytelling. Like It's not like you need to know all the inside references in order to continue on with the – the journey that is Star Trek Picard, but I just, I mean, for me, I was, I was like, wow, that's that's kind of obscure in the reference world, but hopefully that's it's a, uh, an exception and not a rule with Picard going forward. 
Yeah, it is kind of interesting because uh, they are kind of setting up Maddox to possibly have a, a much larger role in the show. Um, and there's already a lot of speculation about that, about where that might lead. Um, but yeah, it is interesting because uh, if I was to pick, well, if I was to pick legacy characters to have on the show, I mean, I probably wouldn't have picked Hugh, although I guess he does make sense with where the story seems to be going. That's probably not the first character I would go to to have on, you know, Picard. Yeah, no, I, I I think, I mean, I think he's an important part of Picard. Obviously, Locutus uh, is an important part of care, of Picard's development. But again, if it, it's not one of those like top ten, I think, uh, when it comes to references from from Star Trek uh, Seven of Nine, you know, everyone knows who she is uh, if they're Star Trek fans. But yeah, I, I thought I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, uh, also, not that. It, good or bad but like the captain picard day banner in his like archive locker i mean it's a cool little nod but like someone who's looking at that it's like oh okay this guy has like kid handprints on a piece of cloth in his archive that's weird that's just strange <laughs> yeah i i you know it's one of those things when they showed it in the trailer i thought it was kind of fun and uh, i think uh I think Ron, you see Ronnie's last comment there. I think that's pretty relevant to what we're talking about. Um, you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird because I, I you see it, it and immediately it conjures, you know, this idea. And I understand thematically and story wise why they had it in there, and it's to reflect because a lot of the opening of of the show is reflecting on the idea because at the end of uh, all good things, you know, they're playing poker. And Picard makes that reference about, I should have done this, you know, sooner, right? Yeah. And so with the Picard Day banner, it's the same idea. It's like he didn't really maybe enjoy his time as captain as much as he should have. Maybe he didn't connect with people more than he thinks he, you know, he did. So, you know, and that's the thing. That there's a lot of regret going on uh, with Picard. A lot of regret, not just about what happened with, you know, obviously, you know, uh, Romulus, you know, but it seems like there's just a lot of regret going on, you know, obviously with what happened with Data, because Data died during Nemesis, but it, he just seems to be uh, mired with regret of things, you know, the road, what they say, the road less taken or not taken, whatever, that kind of idea. He's very mired in that. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a negative. I mean, I think all of us, uh, as we get older, we start thinking about, you know, maybe I should have gone, you know, maybe I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think that's what that was supposed to represent. And that's actually one of the things I liked. Um, somebody mentioned that also on the Starfleet Underground um, podcast that I was on, that they had that same kind of idea that the reason he kept it is because uh, at the time he thought of it as sort of like a chore and he thought it was kind of stupid but then, like, looking back on it, he kind of realized oh, that was actually kind of cool. Maybe I should have been, like, a little nicer to the kids. You know what I mean? Because remember, Picard oh, yeah. was always sort of a jerk towards kids. You know, maybe mm -hmm. maybe Picard kind of looks at that uh, afterwards, and because of the type of show that it is, um, that he's kind of just looking at his life. And that's why he kept that, was he just like, you know, that actually was kind of cool. And and at the same time, because he is a little, he does seem kind of uh, melancholy, and re and he does seem to kind of regret some things that he's kind of like, well, that's one thing I kind of regret. I should have kind of been cooler about Captain Picard day and I should have really got into it. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so, so I, yeah, I totally, I totally agree with that. It's like, and, and that, that's also a great episode um, in TNG. Um, there's a lot of relevance to uh, uh, Picard's relationship with Riker in that episode. Cause correct me if I'm wrong, that's the Pegasus, right? Like that's where they're talking about like, the cloaking and, and, that, and that episode is forever marred by the finale of Enterprise. If you've ever seen that, oh yeah, yeah no, no, we Enterprise. don't, no, no, we don't want to talk that, about that. that. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. Ever rage. marred because of that? So I know it's terrible. So like, so like, you know, you you watch that, and for a Star Trek fan or someone who's watched the show um, probably more times than they would care to admit, that is such a great reference. But for someone, a new consumer, a new viewer of the show, is looking at it. I don't know if they're going to have that same level of connection that, you know, the Star Trek fans would be. So it's, it's a tough, it's a tough time to create 
uh, you know, we're going back and we're talking about like redoing RoboCop and James Bond and all that. We're, it's it's a tough time to create new material without referencing the old material, but also providing that sort of connection. And is it something that is going to prompt someone to say, I don't know what that is on the screen, but I'm going to go figure it out. You know, I, I want to go, where, where's that coming from? So is that like, I don't know if that's a positive or a negative thing so much as it's just the creative time that we're in when it comes to these sorts of references. And for someone who's never seen TNG and they watch that, they're just going to miss it. And they, and you know, how, how, how greatly is that going to impact the, their opinion about Star Trek Picard going forward? If there's going to be more of these references and they're like, I, I don't know, it was some banner that was on there, some dude named Maddox. I have no idea, whatever. There's lasers <laughs> and explosions and an old crotchety guy that wants to get off the planet. So I, I don't know. I think I think that would be my my biggest complaint about the show is that they're they might be referencing too much and not trying to tell the story or if the story that they're trying to tell is inclusive of items that require prior viewing, then you have Star Star Wars problems, but I don't want to get into that. So, anyway, that's my two cents on on the things that I didn't like. Yeah, that's you you bring a valid point. I mean, did you guys watch the Ready Room, uh, Will Wheaton's after show? Did you guys watch that? Yeah, I, I watched it. Did, did you I watch did it? I, I did. Okay, so uh, it was pretty good because uh, Shaban was on it. Um, and, and I definitely want to talk about his comments. I really want to talk about his comments because uh, Shaban was, 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 was incredibly candid. I, I was almost shocked that they put that stuff on there. Um, and um, but, it, but it was interesting because – one of the things that came up in that was Will, we uh, Will Wheaton was talking about how his wife is not a Star Trek fan, and Will Wheaton is. Will Wheaton has always said, "No, I, I'm not just on the show. I'm a fan. I've always been a fan," uh, which most actors are not, quite frankly. Uh, most mm -hmm. of the Star Trek actors are not fans of Star Trek at all. Um, so he is. He, he's always had that fan cred, and uh, he mentioned that uh, you know he's been getting advanced copies of the show because he's doing the after show, so he gets to watch the shows he's already seen. I think episode four or five or something like that. And uh, he's been watching them with his wife, who he said is not a Star Trek fan. And he said that she actually really likes the show. And uh, uh, Shaban did say that that's kind of what they're going for is that they want, you know, they want to do both. They want to get the hardcore fans and they want to get the new people. Well, they always want to do that, right? That's right. studios right. always want to do that with legacy properties. They want to expand the audience. Uh, but the, the implementation of that is always is not always <laughs> very good because you end up it always seems like you end up alienating someone just as you're making that point it's making me think about that yeah it does make it harder for someone that's never seen star trek to get into something like this because there are so many references to what happened before but i would make another point that that is never almost never made uh, in star trek circles uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but but if you look at the numbers of Star Trek as far as the ratings throughout the years, Star Trek basically peaked um, around the the era of Emissary when the very first uh, DS9 episode came out, um, and then DS9's ratings plummeted, and of course Next Gen got a little bit of a bump uh, at the very very end because you know the the show was the show was ending, and that was kind of like the peak, and ever since then the ratings have always been going down with every series uh, with DS nine Voyager enterprise, the ratings have always been going down. So uh, another aspect of this is um, kind of getting those old next gen fans back uh, because there are certain next gen fans that never came back. Uh, they stopped at next gen. They never got into deep space nine. They never got into Voyager. They definitely never got into enterprise because their, their ratings were really bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so th there's a lot of Star Trek fans out there that have not been supporting the other shows. So that, so there is that aspect of, I don't know if the studio recognizes that or they understand that. I know, I think a lot of fans actually don't understand that. You know, I, I went, I went to Star Trek Vegas the last two years, and this is supposed to be like the hardcore fans, the hardcore fans. I had a, a, a guy that I met, uh, two years ago and I, I got to reconnect with them this last year. And he was a fan of the original series and Next Gen and Discovery. He had no idea what Section 31 was, and I had to explain it to him because of, you know, that was introduced in Deep Space Nine, and of course, it's a big part of Discovery. Right. I had to explain right. that to him. So it, it, there's all kinds, you know what I mean, uh, when it comes to, to the fandom. And this is a guy that never, ever gave 
DS9 a chance. And then I met other people. DS9 was their favorite track. You know what I mean? That was their that was their big thing. That was their big go to series. So when it comes to the fandom, uh, a lot of them are all over the place when it comes to these kinds of things. And there there is a whole category of fans that have not been supporting Trek for a long time. You know, uh, that, that they they were into next gen. They grew up on next gen, but they didn't support the other shows. They just didn't get into them. So, um, you know, it, it's kind of a catch 22, you know, because like I said, everybody wants to make that show based on these established properties. They all want to make this show where it's like, well, we got to keep the audience we have and we got to grow it at the same time. Everybody says they want to do that. Actually doing it is hard because you end up pissing somebody off or you end up leaving somebody behind and they don't know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, you're um, always going to have the purists, right? You're always going to have the people that are like, I only want to watch this show, and there's no right. other show. There's never been any other show. Um, you know, and and that, yeah, you can you can divide an audience. I, I think perhaps there is a vocal minority factor in this in a lot of ways, but I also feel like streaming, uh, Star Trek being available on stream, you know, over the last decade or so has has provided an option to people who are watching Star Trek to see start to finish ds9 because if you're just watching D deep space nine like one episode at a time you're like all right i you know cisco's got a goatee in this episode and then 15 20 episodes later uh he doesn't have hair but he's also <laughs> like why is Worf on the show you know it's like it, so you have to watch that as a serial and um like i my, my favorite star trek is deep space nine because of of its its continuity and its story but um in terms of like best episodes you know just watch one-offs like that's tng because you don't really need to know really what has happened before because anytime that there was some reference previously they they bring it up you know it's like borg had or a, a picard had borg implants and and now there's this young borg on the ship who they're debating whether to save or kill you know it's like those sorts of things you could watch those shows and get away with that um, but now I think it's even more difficult because people expect the serials. They expect to see from start to finish these ongoing shows. And I don't know if it's an investment or maybe they don't want to like shatter their expectations of what Star Trek could have been, may have been. Like this guy that you met at the convention where he only watched uh, TNG. Did he did he watch Star Trek Generations or does he just not want to go down that road and he doesn't want to see Kirk die? You know, I don't, I don't remember what, how he felt about the movies. I just remember that talking to him, he had never watched Deep Space Nine, and I had to explain what Section 31 was to him because the, they, they feature prominently in Discovery, and I yeah. was kind of explaining the history of, of Section 31 to him uh, because he never watched Deep Space Nine, He never, and he didn't watch Voyager either. That, those are the two I remember. Or, or Enterprise. I, 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 he, was a, he was clueless in all three of those. Just never got into it. And um, this is a guy who's who's – who had like a VIP pass at, 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 at Trek Vegas, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, and was, and was buying autographs like crazy from people, you know? So um, that, that, that just saying it takes all kinds. And, and, and again, one thing I just never hear brought up is that there is a whole part of the audience that has not come back to Star Trek in a very long time. You just got to look at the numbers. Now streaming, you, you, you bring up a good point because we don't know the numbers with the streaming. We don't know how many fans they've picked up again, how many, you know, I, I would love to know what kind of numbers like Enterprise gets on Netflix. I would love to know that, but they're never going to tell us. You know what I mean? So we're never going to know. But I would love to know that. I would love to know if there's sort of like a a resurgence there or whatever. I definitely kind of see it with Deep Space Nine because I think that happened to me personally when I first same, watched same Deep Space me. Nine. Yeah. Um, I I watched like the first like I want to say like season and a half. And it just, I was just like, I am not really feeling this at all. You know what I mean? This is, this is, this just is not, you know, it, I, it wasn't clicking with me. And I, and I, I, I hung in there for a while, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, it, because uh, when D Space Nine started, it was not serialized. It was episodic. And so it was, it, you know, the, the format was very different. Uh, they had no idea what the Dominion was going to be yet. And uh, they were still forming all these ideas. And there was all the controversy with Babylon 5. That were going on as well and so i remember leaving somewhere around that point i think maybe i, I might have got to the end of the second season i can't remember but at some point i just said you know what i got other things to do and uh i, I didn't watch it anymore and then what happened was uh years later they started doing reruns 
uh, on, I think TNT where they had uh, next gen and they had deep space nine together, uh, running, basically running one after the other. And I, I love TNG. So I started watching TNG and I said, Oh, I'm going to stick around for deep space nine. And I happened to come like right when Worf, you know, was brought on and, and the dominion war really started. And then I was like, okay, this is a completely different show than what I remember. You know what I mean? I was yeah. like, this, this is, this stuff is good. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was really enjoying it. And I, and I don't think like the previous, like the first two or three episodes of, of DS9 are terrible or anything, especially today. But at the time, it, re it really wasn't grabbing me. It wasn't until, they, until I watched on TNT years later that I really started to get into it. And then I was like, okay, this is cool. I, I really like this. This whole Dominion War story arc is, is amazing, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, initially I got, I got turned off by it and, and I walked away. Uh, Voyager, I never got into Voyager first run. Since then, I've seen all the episodes. Enterprise, after the after the pilot, I was just done. There were so many continuity errors in my mind. I was like, I'm done. I'm not even going to try, you know? Uh, yeah. Since I've watched all of them, you know? And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I want to, I, I just want to say that I think those sorts of, like the, the episodic, the ongoing, that's, that's what's going to happen now. I mean, that's what Picard is. But I, as I was watching Picard, I feel like, TNG as it was, um, as they portrayed it, as they released it, then would not be able, would not do well now. I don't think you would have that at all. It's, it's ship in a bottle episodes and that just doesn't connect with audiences anymore. And, um, you know, was DS9 ahead of its time maybe, but I, it's really kind of interesting that, um, as I was watching, I was like, oh yeah, that's a reference. That's a reference. That's a reference. But those are all individual episodes that people can just watch and they don't have to watch the whole season. You know, they don't have to see the whole season to understand that like subtle reference. They just need to watch the episode. Heck, they could just watch the clip on YouTube and and get away with it. And um, I just, I, good, bad, or otherwise, I just thought that was that was interesting to me that that's you know because of the time that we live in, that's the sort of thing that wouldn't happen anymore. We wouldn't be able to get away with watching these standalone almost cartoon like uh, episodes where it's like you don't have to know what. what happened beforehand it's all good just know that this was the reference and you know we'll continue on and at the very end there's going to be some heartfelt message and then you know roll credits so there was a comment from the chat because we were talking about section 31 earlier and this is from mind hunger and he said i always thought section 31 was sloan alone sloan made it up and uh there were a lot of people that actually had that interpretation of what section 31 was um, it's actually even kind of stated in the in the show that it, that might have been the case, but uh, clearly um, with uh, with where they are in Trek now, uh, that hasn't been the case. There are references to Section Thirty One in Enterprise. Uh, okay. Obviously, Discovery has tons of references to Section Thirty One. So, for for you know, better or worse, whatever, however you feel about that, um, I, I'm not a a big proponent of Section Thirty One myself. As far as, as to me, that's not really Trek. I like the way they did in Deep Space Nine better than what I'm seeing that I've seen in Discovery, uh, because I think in Deep Space Nine, Section 31 was a very, um, they were basically a, a, a secret society, for lack of a better term. They, they, weren't, they weren't like an official entity. Uh, whereas in uh, Discovery, you know, they're running around with badges, they have ships, all that kind of, th you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know that, that that's where I think a lot of fans kind of get they get rubbed the wrong way by it. I mean, there's supposed to be a Section 31 show coming out eventually, or or as a spinoff of Discovery. Um, I don't know. That's a whole other topic right there. But yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I, I I was just curious because I know you'd said Eric that that by the time we get to Picard and you had your CBS All Access that you were going to go back and, and actually re-watch re some of this. Have you actually watched any of Discovery yet? No, no I've only watched the two episodes. I, I saw the pilot, and then I've, I've seen this, the first episode of the second season. Um, but uh, I, 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 I live in a spoiler-heavy world, so I pretty much know everything already as far as what's going on in Discovery. Um, one of the things that I think is going on also uh, cause this is a spoiler conversation. Uh, I think Picard is setting up the events of discovery, um, yeah. for, for better or worse. And I yeah. think a lot of fans are going to be really pissed about that, to be honest with you, because, um, 
the the idea that we are going to actually like watch the fall of the federation in picard you see that that's where that's where i that's 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 where i go it's like because i'm into the lore i'm into the world building it i feel like that's where this show is going to go it's going to show us why the federation crumbled into dust um and um that's a big concern for me because i know that's where discovery is going and the discovery the third season there's no federation anymore and they're trying to bring it back you know my question would be why are you trying to bring back a failed institution you know what i mean especially if it's been like gone for hundreds of years why not build something else well because that requires writing right you know so but anyway (laughs) i i digress you know that's one of my biggest concerns with picard is that that it's going to be uh too dark um that that's kind of where it's going to go and it's going to mess up a lot of the lore um just just something real casual that 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 that, that took me out of it real early really early and i rewatched the episode right before we came on because i wanted to make sure i had some things fresh in my mind and like uh one of the things that, that took me out of the the show because uh, i love the opening scene and oh, it's I, I, thought yeah. that, I, I thought that was great. Obviously, for someone like me, grew up on TNG, I loved it. Yeah. But when we see um, Dodge with her boyfriend, that was like so contemporary to me. I mean, it was it it, it pulled me out of Star Trek. You know, out of Star Trek. It, it, it was just so contemporary. I've never heard words like "cool" and "dude" in Star Trek before, except I think like in Voyage Home when they went to the past. You know what I mean? Um, Stuff like that is really jarring to me because it takes me out of that world. It's like, I want to be in that world. I can be in the real world. You know what I mean? I can walk outside. You know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, what that's yeah. Like. You can just go. I want to see I, like a different world. You know what I mean? And so things like that are things that kind of get to me, you know, because I'm like, it, it takes me out of it. You know, I'm like, like, now I'm like, wait a second. That guy's an alien and he's saying cool. I mean, c- come on. You know what I mean? Like he's. We're not even talking about like uh, different human cultures here. You know what I mean? That this person is basically an American. You know what I mean? It's like that 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 kind of stuff. I really dislike that 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 because it pulls me out of it. It pulls me out of the narrative. I, I feel like that opening scene actually for me it pulled me out, um, but not not just for dialogue, but also for the fact that I had I had just last month rewatched Altered Carbon and that whole scene. I was like, I just I just saw this in another show. Like, it's not even that, like, original of an introduction for me. I mean, it was cool. Like, oh, okay. But, I, yeah, it definitely it definitely removed me from from the scene. But, like, I kind of – I'll give it a pass. Like, I'll just, I'll just say, okay, you know, that's that's the young kids. They don't know what they're doing. You know, they're they're new to this whole Star Trek thing. But, yeah, I, 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 feel, I feel like there's definitely some elements that they're trying to appeal. They're trying to be hip to the to the new kids. But it's like, ah, you didn't really have to do that. There's other ways to, to communicate it and slang, swearing, stuff like that. That that was never in the original Star Trek. And so you can kind of keep to those virtues um, without trying to make some reference to yeah, modern age. Like, it's, I, I don't know. Yeah, I totally agree. It just doesn't – it doesn't fit. It didn't fit with the – with what they were trying to do. The, the the one that's actually much worse, in my opinion, is the attitude of the reporter. Uh, the attitude of the reporter, she comes across as, as a, you know, for lack of a better term, as a specious, you know what I mean? Uh, as yeah. someone that's, that's very um, prejudiced, uh, who's very dismissive. Um, it was funny on, because uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't the one who came up with this, but on the Starfleet Underground uh, podcast, we were talking about the FF, FNN thing, and somebody said, "Was that supposed to be fake news network? Was that what, <laughs> was that what that was? Right. You know what I mean? Because the way that reporter was was so like that. You talk about being like a reflection of our times. That's a very bad reflection of our times in terms of of what a lot of people feel about the media right now. Right. And um, she's just, but 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 the thing was like she was like a racist. You know what I mean? Like she was a specious. She was like you know like Romulan mean, lives don't matter. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and no, it's that's like, yeah, that's not that's yeah. not Trek. That humans in Trek aren't like that. You know what I mean? Not not at this point. Maybe TOS. You know what I mean? They had some some different ideas and things like that. But by next gen, they're not supposed to feel like that anymore. You know what I mean? They're supposed to be more evolved. You know that was kind of the idea. And then how disrespectful she is to Picard, um, and the way she talks to him and everything like that. Um, those kinds of things are 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 what, what concern me. You know. Uh, yeah, I also like 
canonically speaking, I mean, you know, yeah, the Romulans have always been devious and, and terrible, but like um, they were ally. I mean, within within this Star Trek universe, they were allies with the Federation during the Dominion War. Yeah, they had their ups and downs, but then like their worst thing was their redheaded stepchild, Tom Hardy, and he didn't even really do anything. Yeah, okay, he blew up like the Senate, but like whatever. So it wasn't like he he had some invasion force that just attacked the Federation. Like that didn't happen. So unless they're gonna go into some backstory about how like how ugly the Romulans are, I I don't I don't know. I think they just picked on the Romulans because they're always picking on the Romulans. It could have been Klingons, you know, if they wanted to do it, but whatever. Like there there could have been other things that I think they could have identified with. I get it though because they had to tie in the Kelvin. Uh, Romulus thing to this this canon. I get, I totally get it. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, she just flat out was like, yeah, uh, Romulan lives don't matter. I'm like, oh, oh wow, okay. And she's like picking on the old dude. This is uncomfortable for me. So I, I sided with Picard in that scene, and maybe that was their intention. Maybe that's what they're trying to go with. Is like, old guy isn't and, crazy. And also going back to Maddox and Measure of a Man, which again we reviewed on a previous episode. If anybody wants to check that out. <laughs> we did review Measure of a Man. And uh, getting back to that, Measure of a Man established that Sung style androids have rights, that these synths have rights. And that seemed to be completely like forgotten and glossed over. It's like now there's a ban. Now, what does the ban mean? Does that mean you can't make anymore? Or are they out there killing these things? You know what I mean? Um, so that, yeah. that's another big thing is like it, it's like they they took that away. You know what I mean? That the whole measure of a man thing and and the fact that no, you know, Sung style androids like Data are supposed to have rights just like any other individual. I, that was well, I mean, like talking about synthetics, um, you know, again, poking around on Reddit, uh, I definitely found um, like some really, really interesting topics uh, that were on there. But I think this is one of the this is one of the speculations for one of the upcoming rogue synths um, that they were referencing uh, in the in the show. and. Yeah, there, there's a picture of them now. So I'm not really sure like where that's going to go. <laughs> and that might backfire. But, I mean, he's just, dude, he, he loves birds. Like, he, I don't know, he seems like a chill dude. I can't see that. So we're having a crossover is what you're saying. There's going to be a crossover in Trek into to another another IP. So, uh, yeah, maybe. Right? Maybe. Oh, is, that what, is he from something? Oh, man, it was on the internet. I just assumed it was true. I, you know, I didn't realize it was from something else. But but the question we have to ask ourselves is: Will all these moments be lost in time, like tears and rain? Oh, there you go. There you Man, go. There's there's some awfully great parallels right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, I, I understand where they're 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 trying to go with it, and um, it's it's definitely an adventure. I mean, we were talking about the 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 Fenris Rangers. All right, okay. You got a dude that's got some rings. He's he's meeting up with some people that are going to give him either more more crew or other objects, and he's going to go find uh, this this um, you know clone or twin or whatever of of potentially a synthetic. Uh, you know he's you've got the Fenris Rangers who are patrolling the border between these these empires. <laughs> I mean, you know I don't want to say it out loud, but like. I hope no, it's, it's been not. said. Yeah. It's been said on this show. It's been said on this show. It's, and it was oh. and, and 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 one of the other uh, programs I was on, they talked about this too. Uh, that there's a lot of Lord of of the Rings references in this this new Star Trek. There's I mean, a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff going on. For so, we, we've we've got our our Romulan Legolas guy is going to be showing up here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what do your Romulan Rom eyes see? Is that like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got I'll Rangers. give you my bow and you my bat left. I mean, I, there's just there's just too many too many parallels. But that's the that's the hero's quest too, which you know again I think that's okay. I, th I mean, this is what it is. It's a hero's journey. You know, if 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 they were in uniforms, they actually had a ship. I'd be a lot better with it than I could play the old theme music from the Galaxy Rangers animated series. You know, <laughs> um, but you know, it's just yeah. Th that's my thing. I just I I mentioned to Eric before we've talked about this. I don't like it that I don't know that we I don't know. I just I just wish they were on a Federation ship, you know? And and that the Federation was gonna have a role in this. 
I just I don't I don't like it's just here, here's my ragtag group. We're gonna go off and have an adventure. Okay. All right. How how are you gonna sell new little little things? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> there's there's no I, I, right now I, I don't want the new Star Trek com badge or whatever they've got. You know, those guys the coin one Picard said they're not Starfleet anymore. So you know, yeah, it's weird because there was a lot of reporting on this show that they talked about that part of the problem with this show is that they're having a hard time finding people to come on board again to license things because uh, a lot of the different groups they were approaching or the groups they've worked with in the past felt like that there wasn't enough content on here that they could actually, you know, sell merch. So it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens, but, um, you know, we did that news story earlier, that whole Fenris Rangers thing, and I was just like, okay, all right. I, I, I'm curious to see how that plays out, but it's just kind of weird they've, they've given themselves such a name. I don't know. You think they just, you know, I mean, I, they can't call themselves the Galaxy Rangers, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so. On Babylon 5, they were simply known as Rangers. They were just the yeah, Rangers. You know I, what I mean? Maybe, that, maybe that's why they have to do that is to, to distinguish it, you know, from Babylon Five, from a, from a copyright legal stand, standpoint <laughs> or something, I don't know. <laughs> you know, they they could just, you know, well, they can't call themselves the Avengers or the Revengers or the Revengers. The Revengers. That would be, that would be not, that, I would like that. That would be that would be yeah. cool. <laughs> now with that, can't call them Renegades either. But I'm gonna let yeah, that go. Yeah. Well, well, we've talked about that too. So. <laughs> Because this this whole thing does bear a striking resemblance to Renegades, so you know it is what it is. That's that's why you have to be careful when you do fan films, right? Yeah. You, well, I can't protect that. Here, so. Yep. Yeah. Well, here's here's my big thing. Um, a lot of the story beats and where they're going didn't bug me as much as I was sitting and watching it as as I thought at first. But I do hate the idea because I do think that's what we're going to see, Eric. I, I do think we're going to see. The Federation basically being pulled apart in this show. And it's going to explain everything that's going on with Discovery Season 3, where several hundred years in the future, the Federation doesn't exist anymore. Um, it, it In a weird way, unfortunately, this brings us back to Star Wars again. Uh, because when we reviewed um, Rise of Skywalker, I said it's not that Rise of Skywalker is a bad movie. I just hate the idea that Rise of Skywalker has to. Yeah, there you go. That Rise of Skywalker basically is now the de facto end of the Skywalker saga because, from a marketing standpoint, to sell the movie, that's what they basically made it, right? Like that's that's basically what it is. I don't hate Rise of Skywalker as a movie. I just hate the idea that this is how supposedly the Skywalker saga ends. Because I don't know if that's necessarily should be the case for me personally. Obviously, I look like an old man, so you could take that opinion however you want. But I find it weird that here in Trek, we're going to take Picard and use Picard to explain what's going to be happening in Season 3 of Discovery. And Discovery may or may not unfortunately be sort of a de facto end of the federation that's right. how the federation story kind of ends I, right. I don't i don't i'm not keen on that that that's going to be my one thing uh so far i'm like i don't know how i feel about that i tell you I there's just, a lot of fans that are, there's a lot of fans that are going to explode if, if that's the way it goes so you know i'm already hearing people that are like and, I, and I'm hearing people that are that are actually pretty positive towards this show and saying, "Give it a chance. Don't don't be jumping the gun." But you know, it's sometimes you can kind of see the path ahead, and other people can't because there a lot of these people haven't even watched Discovery. To be quite mm -hmm. frank, you know what I mean. A lot of these people they have they they never seen it. Um, they're going to watch it probably now because they're watching Picard. They got CBS All Access now. Now they're going to go back and watch Discovery and find out what's going on and kind of get up to speed with what what that show has done. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of fans that are angry if that's, if that's the path it takes, if you're going to use Picard to tell the story of why the Federation collapsed, there's going to be a lot of people that are very angry. And, uh, I, I could probably safely put myself in that category because 
That's not what I want to see. Um, you know, I, I want to, you know, I, I, the whole point to me, the, 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 the most important thing for me with track is, is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. It's a positive, optimistic view of the future. That's all I want. The humans are supposed to be better than humans today. That's all I want. You can explore all the conflict you want through the aliens. You know, the, the aliens are supposed to be, you know, you can use them to, to symbolize any group, any, 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 uh, anything you want. You can use the, the Ron, you know, they can use the, the Romulans, the Klingons, whatever you want, Cardassians. You can use them to explore all the deepest things in humanity. And that's to me what Trek used to be. Um, but now what I feel like is we're being told that you now the Federation kind of sucks now. Starfleet kind of sucks now. Um, you know, so and that's kind of where we're at. So now because of that, Picard has to put this little motley crew together uh, to do something about the situation that's that's evolving in front of them. I mean, we've been told that since they're banned and I, I brought this up earlier. Does that mean that they're, we just can't make anymore or are they like being hunted and killed? You know what I mean? We don't know that yet. And, and, and so that's what I'm saying. This can take like a real dark turn real quick. And, and that's the kind of stuff that, that concerns me because that's not an optimistic view of the future for me. You know what I mean? So that's so, what concerns me. Yeah, no, I think that's totally valid. And, um, and going back to the, the reflection of society, my, my question for you guys is, do you think that because of the way that the fandom is, myself as part of it, uh, the, the way that the... Uh, times the political the social upheaval that we're in and with the with the internet being available to connect these various groups uh good or bad do you think a show like picard is a direct um this this reflection that it is on society do you think picard is because of these things that we are now so um militant uh, that we can become so militant with, that we are so passionate about, that we say, hey, you know what? That's not how this should be. Because I agree, Star Trek is always optimistic. So why are we watching a show that isn't optimistic about Star Trek? What's up with that? But I think that's a bigger picture problem because the the you know ultimately they got to make money. They, the show's got to sell. They've got to they've got to generate the revenue. And so you have people. The writers, the directors, the producers that are saying, well, people want to watch edgy and dark. So this thing that we've always loved and cherished, the thing that we've always kind of sought like comfort in, you know, through various Star Trek shows, have we become so disillusioned with society and organization and government and, and people that this is the only thing that we now connect with is the we don't trust Starfleet. We don't trust society. We just want to live in a chateau out in the middle of France. And then when things get really bad, <laughs> throw me on a friggin' spaceship and I'm going to go on an adventure. Like, is that, <laughs> that's something that, that is, that is there. I, I don't know. I, I, I just felt like that is something maybe a little bit larger. Um, at least for me, as I'm watching it, it's like, well, shit, are we, are we really not trying to get along and trying not to embody those values that Roddenberry had put in place in uh, the original series and TNG and into other shows? Well, I personally don't feel like it's a reflection on us per se. Um, I, I think in all honesty, it, it's what it always is. I, I think the people behind the show are trying to tell us something. And, <laughs> and, and, and then it turns yeah. into... It turns into, like Eric was saying, how do you deliver that message? There's a way in which you could deliver it, which all Trek fans are like. And then there's another way to do it where Trek fans are going to be like. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, already uh, I personally, I, I don't understand this idea that. I don't understand. And we talked about this in a previous episode. I don't understand this concept that they're going, okay, well, Starfleet obviously represents America and what America is. So we're going to tell we're going to tear Starfleet down because we don't like what's happening in America today. Right? Sure. Okay, I can understand you're you're not happy with the government. You're not happy with what's happening politically. There's a lot of things going on. I'm not personally happy about, you know, but sometimes that's just what you weather and so you can vote differently regardless of where you stand. You know, well, 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 Katie has Katie in the chat has a good prediction that I like because it, it is optimistic. And she says, says, I think the moral Picard will be that though the motley crew, quote unquote, left Starfleet, 
Deep down, they hold the original Starfleet principles, and therefore the Federation will be good in the end. So what she's, uh, if I understand what she's saying, it's, it's that her hope is that this new crew will kind of embody those principles that seem to be kind of not so popular right now. And um, that, 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 that this crew will embody those, those principles and sort of bring them back. Yeah. And, you know, I think you make a very good point uh, or she makes a very good point about that because, you know, it, the, just because the volume of humanity doesn't believe in things like the prime directive and the um, value of all life, regardless, regardless of what race it is, you know, even if there are a small number of people that believe in Picard or the Federation or, you know, whatever uh, comes down the pipe, doesn't that count for something? You know, doesn't that count for the, the ultimate vision of, of Star Trek? And even though it's small in number, not everyone is believing it. I, I think that's that's even more potent. I think it's even more valuable um, in the face of even greater uh, dissension and, and uh, adversity, especially since everything's all chaotic in this universe anyway. I mean, yeah, um, I, I like what she's predicting and I, and I hope that's true. Um, I just, I, for me personally, I, I just hate the idea that we're, we're making this connection when as an original series fan, um, and I've watched every version of Star Trek and, and I've liked everything for different reasons, except for Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. I, I just, I can't do that one. Um, you know, but it's like, it's like Batman, Batman Robin. Uh, um, but, um. I just don't like the idea that, you know, that that it, it's it's analogous. It's not. You know, Starfleet was supposed to represent the Earth as a whole. We are all together. We are we are all in this together. People can still disagree. Things can still not go everyone's way. You know, um, but I I just I, I hate that we have to. You know, I, I hope the Motley Crew represents that. She's probably right. That sounds like that's that's probably what they're going to do, especially since in the in an interview section of the uh, the show, Picard actually says, you know, it was no longer Starfleet. So obviously the group that he's going to cobble together obviously would represent the hopefully the ideals of Starfleet as they go out on this mission. You know, this you would adventure. assume so. Yeah, logically you would assume that that, that if he's saying that you know. Starfleet doesn't represent those values. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, make my own crew. You would assume that they do represent the values that he, that he's espousing. But is that actually going to be the case? <laughs> we have, we we don't know yet. You know what I mean? So right. Well, fortunately, I mean, there's there's nine episodes for that maybe to come out, come out, come to light. We've we've got a few acts to go through, uh, in this. So I don't know. You know, we'll just it's going to go by quick, though. You know, like yeah. I, I keep making that point. We're, we're talking about much less content than a standard TNG season. That these ten episodes are going to go by fast, um, and and so they, they they got a lot of lot of explaining to do. You know what I mean? In 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 a very little amount of time, they've got to get they've got to put these new characters together. You know, as, as far as I can tell, we're not going to get a whole lot of the legacy characters doing stuff that's really all that relevant. So they've got to establish these characters quickly. And get us invested in them, you know what I mean, and 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 all that in a, in a very short period of time. Yeah, but it worked out so well in Rise of Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that too soon? Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. we, we got another. <laughs> we got another comment. I think is uh, is, is worth bringing up. Yeah. Did did he say that though? Did Patrick Stewart say that he thought most TOS fans are going to hate? Star Trek Picard. I don't. I remember did he say that? An article somewhere. I don't. I don't remember where it was posted, but I think. Um, I think his comment uh, to to that was something that it's going to challenge their their thinking of the show, um, and and the series. They're, 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 it's not. You're not watching TNG. And his comment was like he's already told that the story with that version of Picard, and this new version of Picard is going to challenge what we remember, what we've seen over and over and over and over again, and that there are going to be people that are just not going to connect with it who are diehard Star Trek fans. Well, well strictly speaking, though, because he's talking about TOS fans, uh, TOS had a lot more conflict than TNG did among the crew and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I think of like the episode Balance of Terror is a, a great episode. We, we did that in our uh, Romulan retrospective uh, a couple weeks back for, for this show. 
And uh, there was a character on that that was, uh, you know, specious, racist, however you want to want to call it in that that uh, that context, because his what like his great grandfather died in the in the war against the Romulans. And yeah. he, he when they found out that the Vulcans and the Romulans were related, he started taking that out on Spock. You know what I mean? Because he, he he associated Spock with the Romulans who killed his his grandfather, great grandfather. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, TOS actually had a lot more conflict among the humans. I mean, obviously, you know that 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 vision of genes was still evolving at that point, um, and he had to deal with other things like the network and all those kinds of things. So uh, it's different. You know, it's different. So I I don't because I I do know I do remember like what you were talking about. Alec, I, 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 I remember something along the lines of, hey, you know, this is going to be very different than, than TNG. I'm not sure about, about TOS fans, you know what I mean, as far as if you're a big TOS fan, if this is going to be, you know, all that jarring. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. And I'm not sh- I can't remember if, if, if Stewart himself said something along those lines because, uh, you know. I, I did meet people like that at, at Star Trek Vegas that were still just TOS fans. <laughs> they never got into anything else. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> you mean they didn't get into the animated series? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. They never got into the anime. They never got into TNG. They never got into anything. You know, so it happens, right? So, well, um, go ahead. Oh no, no, go go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. I was I was just wondering. Um, do we want to get into some of the things that we liked? Or... Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I definitely if, want to talk about things I like because there were things I did enjoy. So, if uh, if you will share my screen, please, Eric. Okay, so this is actually a graphic from our lead-in episode, um, but I thought it was very interesting because, um, again, uh, my prediction uh, turned out to be true um, that that uh, the character of Dodge is is Data's daughter. Um, uh, not in the way in which I quite thought, but still, basically, it is Data's essentially daughter. But I thought it was interesting that there were twin sisters, um, and that's why I thought this graphic was kind of interesting to bring up. You know, the idea that that they're kind of they're twin sisters. I thought it was very. You know, I don't think we're going to see the same thing between Data and Lore. You know, between these two characters per se. But I just thought it was very interesting how because there's two of them and they're sisters and they're twins, how in a unique way they, they kind of go back, you know what I mean? And, and kind of revisit some of these different ideas and, and concepts, because when, you know, data created law, you know, there was, there was just the, just the one, you know? Right. Um, so I thought it was, uh, I thought that was an interesting uh, sort of, sort of way to call back to a lot of these ideas, um, but just do them in a different way. Um, but I, 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 you know, it was weird. When we saw the scene in the apartment, I wasn't sure if I was going to care for Dodge, but by the time that uh, you know she got blown up, <laughs> you know, I was I was kind of like Picard. I was like, "No, it's just kind of liking her. Don't kill her so quick, Lord, have mercy." Yeah, I, I figured she'd be around at least a couple episodes. I was shocked they killed. But then again, like Eric said, uh, they only got ten episodes. They we gotta we gotta we gotta get this going quick. So they killed her real fast. So I was kind of shocked. Uh, but I kind of liked her, you know, until, you know, and then it killed her. So, and it's interesting. I'm curious to see how different her sister's going to be. So another reason I want to bring this up because she may not be like her sister very much, you know, um, depending upon her life experiences. Um, uh, but I, I did like the character of Dodge. Uh, and uh, I kind of like what they're, I, I generally speaking right now, like what they're doing with it. I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to, you know, continue to move that storyline kind of forward. Uh, another We're, nice reference to, uh, to, to TNG with, um, lol, uh, data's first daughter is that, um, Dodge does have the black hair and the blue eyes. So there's, there's that continuity that we see between, I guess, genetics or whatever you want to call it. Um, so that was, that was like a nice, it's very subtle. Um, but it was just something that I remember, um, and you know, not, not a huge deal, but you know, with the comparison to lore and the, and the, the twins and the dual positronic networks or whatever, it's just, those are the details that really make it, I think, make a huge impact for Trek fans, uh, throughout the show. 
No, I noticed that too. I mean, just just the fact that that Dodge has dark hair like Lal did. I mean, that, that that didn't escape me, you know, as I was watching the show. But were you guys pretty shocked when they killed her? I was. I mean, I, they'd shown us a little bit of something in the trailer because you see where the the stuff's on her. I'm a little confused where you know Romulans have you know alien you know. Yeah. What. Well, I- Oh, I, I have a good theory on that, and everybody, everybody I've t- talked to about it has liked it. So I think that's a suicide pill. So he he, he was doing a suicide pill, and it dissolves him. Oh, so he spit it at her okay. to dissolve her, while he was dissolving himself. That's my. Yeah, that theory. was. That, I mean, that was that was pretty cool. But I definitely thought I was like, oh, where's Ripley when you need her? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's what a lot of people thought. Yeah. That's uh, that, that's been a huge criticism, actually, uh, with with uh, some very big channels. Is they're like, hey, when did the Romulans suddenly get like these reptilian like acid glands or whatever? It's like, well, if you if you watch, and I did watch it again. You can actually kind of see him biting on something, like it's doing like a suicide pill. My my thought is it, it's meant to dissolve him, so you can't find his body, and he he spit it out on her, you know, his last breath or whatever. You know, the girl did kill him, so yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> Such a huge, such a huge missed opportunity, though, because uh, Picard could have uh, told the guy, uh, you know, get away from her, you bitch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Totally. And then I don't, I don't know if it's just the way that they do things now, but like the explosion of her going off, like just uh, then you see like the skeletal structure. I'm like, oh man, it's it's gonna be Doctor Manhattan female yeah. version. This, this is great yeah. i love where this is going i was just but you know i think that we're just used to those sorts of things because we've seen him so many times in, you know other places that we just make those associations but yeah acid blood um no but uh, a, a suicide pill makes sense yeah um i would i was shocked to see her die so quickly though and i was surprised that i kind of liked her as much as i did because at first i was kind of like eh, i don't know I feel like I just saw this in another movie, um, but um, I'm curious to see. I, I'm just curious to see how they played out with the, you know, her sister. You know how much she is like her, how different she is, um, and uh, the the curious place in which we find them. Um, I, I did find it interesting that you know apparently these Romulans are, you know, living on board a, a Borg cube. And since, you know, Dodge sister is on that uh, Borg cube, uh, you know, how many of them are synths? How many of them are, you know, um, other alien races that just believe in whatever it is that they're doing there? You know, and, and do they realize that apparently they may or may not be working directly for uh, you know, the Tao Shiar or a version of that idea? Yeah. Uh, I definitely appreciated that that zoom out from... The, I guess the center of the board cube, because I mean, we see it a couple of times. We try and get like the scale of the, the size of the, the board cube, but I feel right. like that was the first time I've watched, I've watched a Trek and felt like that was, that was like, Oh wow. that it, This is huge. This is a giant space cardboard box for all the homeless Romulans. This is cool. Like, <laughs> <you know? laughs> so, uh, you know, and it's, that's, I think, again, another reference. Um, even if you haven't seen a lot of Star Trek, you know that there's a board cube. And, yeah, where would that be in space? Like, if it just blew up, where would that go? You know, it's somewhere. It's somewhere in space. And, yeah, they're using it as, like, a refugee camp. Cool. I like that idea. I think that's that's nice. It's a nice tie-in because we know that we're going to see more Borg, so they're going to obviously touch upon that more, too. I'm also hoping uh, when we did our Romulan retrospect, re- Romulan retrospective, uh, we talked about uh, the Neutral Zone episode, which was the last episode of the first season of TNG. And that episode established that the Borg were already um, basically uh, they were already on the uh, Romulan Federation border and they were already uh, attacking outposts and and uh, scooping them up. So uh, I kind of like the idea of maybe that was literally that ship was the one that was doing all that. You know what I mean? It's just kind of hanging out or whatever. And when uh, my assumption is when the events of Endgame and Voyager happened and, you know, Borg Queens destroyed, the collectives destroyed, that now the Borg are kind of in a weakened state uh, where they're being exploited by the Romulans, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because it it goes, it's another callback 
to that countdown uh, series that actually led into the Kelvin timeline with the first J.J. Abrams film, because in that series, there was this idea that the Borg somehow, uh, well, not the Borg, but the Romulans were somehow uh, incorporating and using, you know, Borg technology. And that explained uh, uh, a little bit about how their ship was organized. Um, and the, That's why Nero's ship was so powerful. Yeah, yeah that Borg yeah, technology. Exactly. And why it was set up the way that it was, but there were, were kind of like workstations everywhere, you know, more like a board cube than necessarily like what we would normally expect from at least uh, going back to TNG, um, you know, a Romulan uh, starship. Yeah, that's also when uh, I've mentioned this before in Star Trek Online, there's a whole story arc where you actually, as a Romulan, you're involved with this conspiracy where basically the Tal Shiar is um, harvesting the Borg and using them and doing all these crazy experiments and stuff like that. So th th there's also that sort of, uh, I guess that's considered what, like beta canon or whatever. So that, that, that's out there as well. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think setting up um, this, yeah, like it's rapid fire, right? I mean, if you, if you're, if you blink, you miss it. Um, and going back to uh, Lauren and Beta, or uh, Lauren Data, sorry, in the beginning of the show, that that intro scene is just so great on so many levels. It's it's all the references, it's all the tie-ins from TNG and Nemesis that you need to bring in Star Trek Picard. But I really, I know people were criticizing uh, Brent Spiner's weight gain. I've seen like a lot of people like, well, Data, why would Data be you know so much larger? You know, I don't, I don't like. I, that doesn't bother me. I can suspend disbelief for that for sure. But his, I felt like his subtle motions when you saw him in all the dream sequences were were so classic data that he's like, he's still got it. You know, it's like, that's yeah. data. That's the data I, I know. He's, he, you know, he's kind of inquisitive. He's looking around, but he's also very direct and he's kind of childlike. But now he's a childlike character who is the the um the raven from that episode where data is, uh, discovers his dream sub program and it's like oh that's really cool that now he's leading picard kind of on this journey and uh like what a nice little reference and i don't know i i thought i thought it was totally fine i think that was criticism that was unwarranted just people complaining to, to, for the sake of complaining but the other part of that is and uh, other people have talked about this as well is that um, remember that uh, Data is essentially a projection of Picard's mind at this point. Uh, he's right. not. He's not. Uh, he's not a person. He's not. He's dead. He's dead. All right. Spoiler right. alert. He's dead. He's dead. What? He's gone. So he's a, he's he's basically something manifesting in Picard's mind through dreams, visions, however you interpret that. But that's what he is, and that gives you license for it to not be like a hundred percent correct. You know what I mean? Because Somebody pointed out that uh, if you notice, which I didn't notice this, and I, I, I'm a stickler for things like this. Somebody else pointed out to me, hey, he's not in the right uniform on the on the Enterprise D. because That's the movie uniform. That was the Enterprise E uniform. That They, they never had that uniform on the Enterprise D. Yeah. And uh, immediately uh, someone else on this panel, when I was talking, they were said, yeah, but this is a dream. Okay. So even, even if they made a mistake, let's just say that the production crew made a mistake, continuity error, whatever. You can you you you're you're entitled to a lot of artistic license when it comes to something like that, because it's basically Picard's sort of memory and his sort of way of envisioning data. You know what I mean? It's right. it's not really data. And uh, you know this was the reason you know Brent, Brent Spiner decided to kill the character off was because he you know he felt like oh I can't really play data anymore. And personally, as a fan, I'm I'm glad he did it. I'm I. I, I I love that he's in this. It's it's pro it's my favorite thing in the episode. You know what I mean? It's seeing data. That that opening scene. Uh, I, I love that opening scene. So uh, I just want to say that 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 you can take artistic license with something like that because we are basically talking about a dream sequence, a vision, if you will. So it it doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, it's a, it's well, a perception and, of that character for sure. And and something I was going to add because uh, Eric, I think you're onto something that. Personally, myself, I just kind of pulled from the episode was the idea that that um, reflection of data um, represents two kind of ideas. The first one being is that that version of data in some ways is reflective of Picard. 
but also in another way, it's maybe a way in which Picard wishes he could see data. I think he wants data to look older and not have died because of the events of Nemesis and had and and actually in the sense was a little bit more human. Right. In, in no, Picard's it, it, mind, he's he is yeah. human. You see what that, that's that's a yeah. great way of looking at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's and that's what I thought we were seeing is in, in you know, they talk about um, uh, there's a concept in the Matrix was uh, I forget what they call it. But I, I think in, in Picard's mind, he wants to think of data as not only being more human, but still being around. So he would look older, you know, but at the same point, too, it's a reflection of Picard. Who is also older you know i just mm -hmm. to me it made total sense because once you see he's in a nemesis uniform he looks slightly different but they're on the enterprise d and apparently they're in either in orbit or near mars for the attack because again it's a dream that turns into a nightmare um to me it made total sense it made total total sense that again data um it's not just data as we know him but it's some, in some ways, the way Picard wishes he could see data, you know, it's like a fantasy kind of idea, you know. Um, so to me, it made total sense, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Brent Spiner continues to kind of cameo in different ways. That you know, me, we may not see data, you know, as Holmes, or we may not see data in a dream sequence even in maybe that countdown uniform or a, a later, you, you know what I mean, or as a part of their crew or um and i i i personally i love that idea i think it's really interesting um that they uh that they looked at it and and portrayed it and, and played it in that way i like that a lot yeah for for um the sake of of the the initial episode how picard during the interview is is talking um very candidly about like how important life is how important what the value of life is regardless of what your species is it's it's very apparent and i think it's it's perfect that that his like closest friend isn't isn't a sentient being which is what drives the episode four because now he's talking to all these scientists that are like oh yeah synthetics or you know whatever um or or the news is portraying them as you know these terrible awful things but picard's whole focus is like no it's it's just a it's a new life form and we need to i need to be the one that's there for dodge i need to be the one that fulfills this this dream or this quest or he's not even sure what it is so i i, th I felt like that that beginning sequence is is just so important and so relevant to the rest of the series that um it just touches upon everything very briefly very subtly in such a way that yeah it can now, now, as you're watching the show, what is what are you thinking about? How are you viewing the show? What it, what what references are you calling up for these situations? Because there's going to be a, a a host more of these these callbacks to TNG and the movies and all of that. So, yeah, I I think I agree with you, Dave. I think it was just it was it's it's a great way to keep the character in there without it being data. Yeah, yeah, and and I have a I have a prediction for something I'd love to see. That I don't think they'll do, um, but if if the the twin daughter turns out to be a, a, a like a essentially a good person, okay, and we want to see her live on and and enjoy the adventure and have us have hopefully a hopeful happy ending, I would love for um, them to do something where somehow they they take a a, a portion of Data's consciousness and it's in a hollow deck. And he actually gets to meet essentially his daughter. You know, mm. I would love for the show to end on that note where it's it's a holographic projection of data. It has some of his memories because we've seen characters in the holodeck can live on um, and, and just have at least a brief meeting where he actually gets to meet his daughter and see in a in a sense his lifelong, you know, goal you know, because he was trying to replicate himself and be more human, see that he did attain that idea of, of humanity, that, that he was human, that he has a, a daughter that carries on and will hopefully remember him and, and he gets to have the full human experience. I would love for the show to end that way, regardless of all this dark Starfleet whatever stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would love to see Data have that kind of a, a really magical, awesome, hopeful ending, you know, and, you know, whatever message they want to give us and, you know, they're going to shove it down our throats, whatever, that's great. Um, <laughs> but but I, I really would love to see that play out because with the holodeck technology, that moment could happen. And I think that would be pretty amazing, even if it's just brief and it's how it ends. And I'd be like, yes, <laughs> I would love to see that. It would be a Sung family tradition of interacting with uh, with your parents on the holodeck because they just have such, such dysfunctional families anyway that they're like, well, I'm just going to record it for you. We'll deal with it later once you're a little bit more grown up because I just don't, I don't know how to parent. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. So yeah, I, I think, again, another nice little reference to the old show. Uh, and in a lot of ways, I think it's it could be really impactful if that's if that's how it ends. Even if it's at like, Blade Runner 2049, like, oh my God, this is the connection. And then boom, ends, you know, yeah, watch yeah. the show again. Well, we did a review family also on our, our lead up to Picard and the sort of C story that a lot of people forget about is uh, um, Wesley, right? Wesley with his, uh, the, the, he actually does that. He has like a yeah. little, a little oh, uh, tapestry. memory. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, tapestry. Yeah, that was. In, yeah, that that's a big thing. No, no, yeah. that's not. That's not in tapestry. No, that's it, no, that's not tapestry. No, tapestry is the one where he's his heart. No, I'm talking about the one where Wesley has the. Uh, he he no, has sort of some belongings from his dad. Yeah. And he basically, it, it turns out, one of them is a recording from his dad, and he actually plugs it into the to the hollow suite, so he actually gets like a 3D projection of his dad. Yeah. And his dad actually talks to him. That's you know the episode I mean? where that's right. You're right. To his yeah. chateau. And like, yeah, that's, that's like the right. C story. Yeah, yeah. his fa yeah, family right. actually had a right. lot going on because there's a B story with Worf and his family, that's and right. then there's that's also right. sort of a C story with Wesley. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of coming to turn. So it's it's a really interesting episode. Um, and then I think the episode right after that is the Sung family episode, right? That's the one where Data goes back to see Doctor Sung. Um, yeah, it's or it's either in that series. But the the other one, speaking of family, though, is with uh, uh, his mom. That isn't his actual mom, um, which the name I can't remember, or the name of the episode. But it's in like the last season where she has fooled, she has fooled the medical scanners that she is actually human, but she's actually not, and she's um, a recreation of of. Yeah, her. she's she was a she was a Sung style android. Which, by the way, that that was something that uh, I, I brought up in one of the other discussions was. Uh, when they're at the Daystrom Institute and they're talking about that there was no other quote unquote like perfect Sung Android besides Data because all the other ones malfunction, meaning Lore, B4, what about her? Yeah. The, the mother droid didn't malfunction. She was quote unquote perfect just like Data. In fact, she thought she was a human being. You know what I mean? Right. But they kind of right. just forgot about that. You know what I mean? So because apparently they're just not going to go there. But uh, I did. I did. <laughs> I did make a reference to that on, on one of the other uh, other shows that I was on that was like, hey, everybody forgot about Data's mom. You know what I mean? She's out there still, presumably, unless she, she died or whatever. I mean, that's possible as well because she was programmed to die. Uh, right. But the thing is, is like, you know, they, they didn't even they didn't even mention that. They didn't even go there at all. Um, <laughs> they don't, they don't want to have anything that might be working against them. They're just like, no, 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 no. We'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge when we come to it later. Like, but but I'll tell you, Dave. Uh, the thing that I want to see, which is 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 <laughs> is pretty dark. It, it's it's like the reverse of what you just said. Because and, and I've talked about it before. I especially knowing now that apparently these are uh, essentially like, uh, I guess for a lack of a better term, that they're, they're kind of almost cloned. That's kind of the idea we're getting is that somehow there's like a piece of data out there, and they they were able to use that to rebuild these positronic brains. I would love it to be we find Maddox at the end and he's sitting there with lore. You know what I mean? Like it's lore and lore is the one who actually he used to create these these twins and everything like that. Because then if you can imagine um, for the for the, uh, the, the the sister that's still alive, I can't remember her name, Dodge's sister, if she's still alive and she does turn out to be this you know great, nice person. And then she realizes she's actually the, the loins of lore. You know what I mean? And, and her father is this evil, maniacal you know, kind of, you know, pulling the strings and th this whole thing, you know what I mean? That I think that would be crazy, you know what I mean? It would be kind of neat, you know, so. I, I, could... saw, I, I saw that movie, it was called Rise of Skywalker. 
So it isn't too soon. I see what we're doing here. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Uh, that would that would be actually you're right. That would be exactly the same thing, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah, they, yeah. they probably got a hold but of the. Would be his father, not not his grandfather? <laughs> oh, okay. Tomato, tomato. They probably got a hold of the script like some number of years ago, and they read it, and they were like, "Oh yeah, no, this is great. This Rise of Skywalker thing. Let's do it for Star Trek." And then off they go. But hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, well, speaking of the ideas and pitches, though, I did want to uh, I did want to mention the Shaban comment uh, during the the ready room uh, that I thought was really interesting, which was that he said that the initial pitch that uh, Kurtzman and his team did to Patrick Stewart was a total failure, and Patrick Stewart said no way, and then he came up with a second pitch that he said it was like thirty two pages long, and uh, Patrick Stewart that's what made him sign onto the project. And then Shaban admitted that they tossed it, that his his proposal was thrown in the in the in the trash. Hmm. And I would love to know what Shaban's proposal was. I'd love to know the original one too. Uh, I'll probably never be able to see these things, but I, I just wanted to mention that as far as because we were talking about these different story ideas and stuff. Because I, I was I was I was shocked Shaban was allowed to say that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that right. basically the first pitch uh, from from Kurtzman and his team was flatly rejected. He did, he, he did the pitch that got Stewart, and then they threw his pitch away. He said none of his stuff made it in the show. He just threw it and, in the show. And, and to drive that even home further, that Shaban is, you know, we don't know, hopefully it was amicable, but that Shaban is kind of off the show as, as showrunner as of, I think, season two, isn't it? I mean, basically yeah. he's – so that's the thing that's really weird. It's like – because in the interviews with – uh, I've seen with Patrick Stewart, he talks about how he's like, so these great writers and, and this guy's won a Pulitzer prize and, and he just loves this idea. And Shaban was the one that pitched the one that got Stewart to come back, but then you're out of here. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't it's know. weird. A lot, a lot of that stuff just, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, uh, yeah. But you know, I, I know from, some of the stuff that I've worked on, that that's that's how it works. I mean, you know, you work on something and you're working towards something, and, and you know, for example, um, with this stuff, some of the stuff I did with DC, you know, there's a lot of stuff that was just straight up just thrown away. Um, sometimes in the middle of it, you know, they they change direction and you end up with these weird cobbled together things. Or some books I uh, I can't look at them anymore because I know of of all the changes and all the strangeness that went on. That you know, you get this weird Frankenstein project. I'm like, Ugh, I don't know what to say about that. It's not even about creative vision. Sometimes it's just about a cohesive story. Then you can sit back and be like, "Yeah, I was part of that. It was fun," you know. But then they they monkey with it so much, you know. I mean, that's how you get things like Rise of Skywalker. You know, the so, so much damage and so much weird things were going on. You know, how do you how do you finish that? <laughs> how do you how do you wrap this all up? You know. It, it, in a weird way, it seems Bundle like there's... it up and, and toss it in the dumpster. That's how you finish it. say, nope, I'm going to redo. Reset button. That's the only way to well, do it. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It's just, I'm just, I'm surprised as, you know, at the transparency with the internet and the kind of the, we could even call it the, you know, they, they talk about the 24 hour news cycle. Now we have the, the 24 hour entertainment news cycle too. And how information is constantly coming out and leaks and whatever. And I'm constantly shocked. Um, and I, I, you know, I know this from being in the middle of it sometimes, but at the same point, it's still shocking to me how much uh, of entertainment that we enjoy is created the same way as when you're in school, you know, and the one person starts the story and you have to hand it off to the other person. And then, and then they add to it, and it goes to the next person. They add to it. So, yeah, there, there's collaboration, and then there's that weird thing that you get at the end, you know. And, and, and you just don't want to be that person who has to take that and go, well, "How do we finish this?" You know. Um, I always, in my mind's eye, anyway, it, it, imagined that you know people had a more obvious, logical through line with what they're going to do. You you would think that, you know, if someone put together this great idea that we're we're heading towards you know, that great idea at the end and things may change a little bit, but you're still going to get, you know, where you're supposed to be at the end. But it, it's, it's much more musical chairs and, and, you know, 
Oh, um, it's, a, it's a telephone game for sure. Yeah, it's just it's just I, I'm still kind of shocked at how much it is because um, we're all independent artists. Um, we've all uh, every single one of us have, has self published an independent created comic book, and I myself, um, as you know, both of you gentlemen can chime in. But it's like um, I'm shocked at what an amazing singular creative vision you know, this project that I put together at the end of the day, ironically is. Uh, at the time, I wouldn't thought of it as something truly remarkable. And that it is an idea that two people had that they brought to fruition and everybody was on the same page and, and we got to the end of it, you know, and, and it's what we intended it to be. Um, and Cause I always imagine so much of it is that, you know, you hire a producer, you hire a showrunner, you know, or someone writes the story you know, but it, it's it's amazing how Frankenstein uh, things are even more so that, than I thought. Um, I mean, you I, guys can chime in, but I mean, are you guys a little surprised at that too? Because I'm surprised at how much of that there really is involved. Well, I mean, I guess I always go back and think about the, I, I don't know if you guys have reviewed it on here, but the, uh, the original Superman script for the 90s and the guy's like, we're going to have this giant fight at the end of the movie against a, a a, a spider, a huge spider. And uh, I think it was Kevin Smith was like, no, that's not, that's not going to work. And so it was to scrap it obviously. And then that script became, well, a, an abomination of it became wild, wild west. So it's like that singular vision that someone's like, no, I want a giant <laughs> spider. We're going to fight it. And it's going to happen. Like someone's going to die on that hill for a script. Like, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is a singular vision. So I guess, you know, kudos to you for seeing your vision through to the end. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that story too. Yeah, that, that, is, that is pretty, that, that, that's like a, a big, you know, classic Hollywood story, you know. Right. But, but uh, to be honest with you, Dave, because, you know, I, I've been, even, even though I haven't produced a lot of film, I've, I've produced enough to know that with film, uh, it, it's very collaborative. And uh, the, 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 a lot of people get their their hands in it, and and it's good and bad. Uh, like when we talked about our Joker review, uh, I saw a really cool thing with Joaquin Phoenix where he was talking about the contributions that I think the prop master and one of the makeup artists did to his performance. Um, and so, in some ways, you know, it's great, it's wonderful. You know what I mean? And he's acknowledging that, like he said, like that scene where he's uh, dancing with the gun. That was the prop master just coming up to him and saying, "Well, well, try this." You know what I mean? Because he was like, kind of like losing it. Like he didn't know what else to do. And he said, well, play with the gun. You know what I mean? And literally that's where that scene kind of came out of. So it's very collaborative. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but when you're talking about sort of this, this, this like telephone game, musical chair thing, uh, I mean, what you have right now is <laughs> that there's a lot of rumors that say that these studios are, are kind of rudderless in a lot of ways. And you're seeing this constant change with the showrunners and the leadership and all that kind of stuff because the people at the top just don't know what they're doing, you know? Uh, well, so it, it, it's... It's very reactionary. It's very yeah. reactionary to the consumer base. You know, they see something is really popular and they're like, we're going to do that. We're going to do Deadpool, but we're going to call it our own thing. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. And it's like that. So yeah, you're, you're right. It's rudderless. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do Deadpool. We're gonna sew his mouth shut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and who made soon? that decision? Who made that decision? I don't know who. who made Some that someone decision? very successful made that decision. Really? Who, who, yeah. Yeah. The the whole the the Deadpool mouth the uh, sewing the mouth shut. <laughs> check it out. Check it out. Um, <laughs> These, a lot of these guys who are some of the biggest guys in the business have made some of the stupidest boneheaded, you know, decisions, you know, catastrophes. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're at the top level, you know what I mean? Top level, you know, think of, think of Kurtzman and, and the whole universal monster debacle and everything like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. and then they keep giving these guys work, you know what I mean? It just, Kind of shrug your, you kind of shrug your your shoulders. You're just like it's it is what it is. You, you know, so yeah. yeah. I mean, guess any publicity is good publicity. Like, you know, how many? Oh, people especially went to go now. See, yeah, I mean, like, 
you know, I, I like Knives Out. I thought that was really good. But how many people were like, oh, Ryan Johnson, that guy, that was the guy that ruined Star Wars. I'm going to go <laughs> see his movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're really sticking it to him. So, I mean, it's it, it's a name recognition, better or worse. It's, it's a name recognition. So, I, I don't know. But at least with – I mean, I, I, I remember watching interviews with um, – uh, I, I receive and bear for DS nine and Jerry Taylor and Michael pillar. Um, and they were, they were talking about how like both Voyager and DS nine got a lot of pushback, a lot of pushback because they were doing their vision for what those shows were going to be was not cool for the Roddenberry vision. It was, it was pushing the boundaries well outside of that comfort zone. Like this is, this is not good. Like, DS9, there are several episodes of DS9, like even Section 31, um, but, you know, in Pale Moonlight and, uh, well, at least that one for sure. Those are the ones that come to mind. Those episodes would have never been made if Gene Roddenberry was still around. Oh, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just so dark. And, like, this Picard show probably wouldn't have been made had Gene Roddenberry been around. So, you know, Gene Roddenberry, the rudder, goes away and people have all these different visions and then you get enterprise and well, you know, the rest is history. So I don't know. Uh, I, I think that's why I'm excited for the show uh, to see just where it goes. Like I, I, you know, I, I watched, I've watched one episode of discovery with Dave and he spoiled the entire first two seasons for me. which was fantastic. <laughs> At, I, I, I like watching that episode. So great. Now I feel more inclined to watch one and two all the way through. I'll get around to it when I, when I can, I'll get around to it. And that I think is something to be said. It's like, there's this one episode you want to see it, you know, does baby Yoda show up What's baby Yoda. Now I got to watch the Mandalorian. You know, there's, there's those sorts of like little hooks that are hopefully drawing in more viewers to the show. And I, I don't know. It's, it's a journey. We'll just see where it goes. No, that's true. That's true. And, and I do think that there's a lot of potential for Picard. Um, you know, the, the, there's, I think there's a ton of potential for it. Um, you know, the, the comment was made earlier, you know, if these characters do embody some, some hope and some principles and things like that, you know, it, it could be really good. But then again, there's things I've heard that said that they're not. So we're just gonna have to see, you know what I mean? So, right. Right. Yeah. It, I guess it's, it's, it turns into if they're all ex federation, you know, or, you know, if we've got, you know, kind of the the Han Solo Chewbacca, you know, smugglers, you know, on board the Millennium Falcon, you know what I mean? And maybe well, we know a little bit about guy, two. But... We know about two of them, right? We know from the comic, yeah. the one character apparently was Starfleet. Yeah, is and then we know another character's already been introduced, which is the uh, scientist the in the Daystrom Institute. Yeah. She, she's already been shown. We know oh, she's going to be part of the crew. The the girl from uh, Scott Pilgrim, that one. Was she on Scott Pilgrim? Yeah, she's a drummer. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. I think I heard that, somebody say that, actually. The drummer from Scott Pilgrim. I, I remember that reference somewhere. Yeah, I've seen I, that I, movie, but I didn't make the connection. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> are you, we're ta I'm talking about the scientist from the Daystrom Institute, the, yeah, the blonde. The, the, blonde that, the blonde girl, yeah. whose, I, whose name I can't remember. But, yeah, she's definitely the drummer from the Sex Bomb, sex bomb, bomb or whatever whatever the name of the band was from <laughs> Scott Pilgrim. Right. Just caught me off guard. That's all. <laughs> but she's but, in the crew. I, I know she's in the crew. Yeah. So, and then uh, I don't know, are, 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 are either Picard slaves going to be part of the crew? <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't, no, that's, we can't say the S word. We don't say that here. <laughs> I had to say that because nobody's saying that. I just think it's funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, well, Picard, I, Everybody calls yeah. them as caretakers. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> caretakers without pay. Caretaker, because there is no pay, remember? There's no pay right. in Star Trek. So did, not, did not, you, not on the Chateau Picard. But did did you um because I, I thought that's who they were supposed to be, but did you think that they might have been those two Tao Shiar agents that were helping the indigenous people in the Car Picard comic? Yeah, I have to look it up because I I forgot to do that because <laughs> I thought the same I, thing, Dave. But I need to look up the names, and then the, we yeah, know a definitive answer. We just got to look the names up. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, I I wonder if that that that's them. And yeah, that's with, I, with I, I think they are, and I 
it, it's it, and all we got to do is open up the book and and look at the names and look up the other names on IMDb and we would have a definitive answer to that. But I didn't we'll do that. By, hopefully, we'll know by next episode because <laughs> third episode, you know, the third issue, we can finally bring all the connections together and it'll all hopefully, you know, gel. Um, but no, I, I, like I said, I, uh, there was a lot of things I liked about the show. I was surprised how much I, like I said, I liked Data's daughter. I liked a lot of the, uh, allusions to different things they were doing. Something else I, I like, I thought the show had really great production values. Um, I like the look of everything for the most part. The greater Boston thing was, was like you said, it was a little jarring because it did feel a little too contemporary, but um, even stylistically within the, the room itself, you know, it, it felt too modern as in our modern days. It was very contemporary. It was like a scene. Yeah. It was like a scene out of friends. You know what I yeah, mean? Oh, like, totally. it, that, yeah. 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 So, well, I mean, you know, there was like, you know, you, you, you go over, you see the FN, FNN, and then you also saw the, the Ferengi logo. It's like, ah, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. That's like a nice little, like, nice little lot nod. They're still around. They're probably stealing from people or whatever. But So that was you know, the Ferengi News Network? Not the thick, that was the Ferengi News Network? No, I don't know if they were on the same building. I, I don't remember, <laughs> but I did, like, Ferengi News Network, and it's just like stock <laughs> exchanges. That's all it is. It's all about money. <laughs> But, Somebody yeah, I, said that, and it's like, well, if it was the Ferengi News Network, then that reporter's fine. The way she's acting, that's great. That that that, that, that makes total sense, you know. Uh, is it though? Is it? Is she's wearing clothes and she's that's asking that's questions? That's to say. That's to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she works for the Ferengi News Network in, in, in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, like I said uh, at, at the beginning of the show, I like I. I Logan is one of my favorite superhero movies um, for a number of reasons. And this definitely had that Logan feel to it, the way that the colors were, the, the, the shots and everything. It's, it's very much this character, not at the beginning of life, but, but focused on the past and focused on regret and maybe wishing there could have been something different that was done. And um, kind of seeing that tortured soul uh, character come to light through the various scenes and then the way that they're doing the transitions and the colors and everything. I just thought that, that was all very well composed and communicated that very clearly. I can see that. And, and, and that's one of the things I liked about it. it. It had a, like I said, the production values were really great. I, I really enjoyed that. I mean, overall, like I said, I gave it a four out of five. I enjoyed it. Um, I, you know, there was, you know, but it's one of those things, you know, like I've told you, Alec, and, and Eric knows this too, you know, there's a lot of things I like about Discovery. You know, there's some basic structural things I'm not keen on too, you know, but again, the production values are really great. Um, and there's a lot of things I like, a lot of ideas I also like to, you know, that they did. Um, but um, but I'd have to say out, out of the, yeah, I'd have to say the the thing with Data's daughter, I thought that was cool. I really liked that, and I thought the production values were, were really high. Um, and then you know we'll we'll see where it goes from there. Um, but I, but I and I like the score. I thought the score was really good too. The, yeah. So those are my things that I I, I like the most. I think. I will tell you something I did mention before. I didn't like. I don't like the new Federation uniforms. So maybe it's just as well we don't see them. <laughs> well, so maybe they're just DS9 uniforms, but I, I don't really see the difference. But yeah, I just I, I so didn't care for them. They, they look like DS9, just like DS9 uniforms to me. But I don't think the Federation is going to have a prominent role in this show. I, I will predict I don't that either. the Federation is not going to be at least not in any positive way. Yeah, I think they're going to just be background antagonists. They'll be more of a of, of a, a a looming antagonism for the characters but not a direct they're not going to be a direct threat like there's there's not going to be i mean they may have like some some federation ship go after them and then picard uh would have to like somehow disable it i, I don't know i mean it, that's the other thing too is like with this this ragtag crew of friends it kind of reminds me of the, uh, <laughs> the like the the episode where he's he's um the, the 
whatever the Vulcan mind weapon, you know, he's in the archeologist and they've got like, yeah. kind of, there's, there's like some definite parallels to that, which is cool. Cause I like that episode, uh, it, you know, in, in terms of like seeing the other side of Picard where he's not the commander that's standing up there and, and, you know, being Mr. Starfleet, he's kind of being this rogue guy, but he's still got the underlying Starfleet values. So again, another, another nod to the, to TNG, which, um, I, I think works in a lot of ways. Yeah, that, that right. is an interesting episode, the one you're talking about. It's a two-parter. Yeah. It's a pretty pretty interesting episode, and it was an interesting role, I think, for Patrick Stewart. Because, well, like sure you said, he was a hell of a lot of fun. Like, he you know, had he, fun in that one. Yeah, yeah because yeah. he, he was playing a, a totally, almost like a totally different character, but still having to be Picard, you know? Right, so, right. But, yeah. Yeah, I... I, I like I said, four and a half stars uh, out of five for me, um, just because I want to see where the, where it goes. Um, I, I don't. It's not going to impact my opinion of Star Trek as a whole. Like, I'm not a fan of Voyager or Enterprise, but I still like Star Trek, and they're all part of the same thing. And there's room enough there for for every little bit. There's always some good episodes, some always you know fun ones. And I think this is a, a dark Star Trek. I don't think if I'm going to be in a good mood, I'm going to want to watch it over and over again. I don't think it's going to be like it's not the Orville. That's for sure. Right. You know. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Which at some point we, we have to start, you know, maybe doing the Orville episodes. I think that would be cool to do here on the show. Um, yeah. So, um, yes. Yeah, is, is there anything else that anyone wants to bring up or, or do we think we're good here? Well, I just wanted to say, uh, because I know that there's a lot of people that don't like Discovery. Uh, I just want to kind of leave with the fact that when I watched Discovery Pilot, that did not make me want to watch more of it. I did not want to get CBS All Access just so I could watch more of the show. But with Picard, I do. Uh, I can legitimately say that with Picard, I, I do want to watch more. I, I would be watching more even if we weren't doing the show. So but that's kind of what a pilot's supposed to do. Uh, it's, it's not supposed to turn you off. It's supposed to turn you on. You know, Ultimately, you, know, you can't just go with that excuse because I hear it a lot. Well, oh, give it time. Well, I'm paying for this. It better, it better. There's a reason that they have a, a seven day window. You know what I mean? I get to watch the first episode and that's it. So it better hook me. Otherwise, you know what? They're not getting my money. Well, right. and, and let's, let's be honest. When, when has Star Trek ever had like a stellar first season? It's always been, give it a chance. Wait until the facial hair shows up. That's when the show gets good. <laughs> that, that's okay. That's why I want to give it a chance. But, but I will say that, that I don't think the pilots are always like that. Like, for instance, you know, I, yeah. I talked about I bailed on DS9, but I thought Emissary was a very strong pilot. I, I enjoyed it. Oh. You know what I mean? It sucked me in that I stuck with that show for like a year and a half, even though I didn't really like it that much. You know what I mean? So the, yeah. the, there is the, the first episode sets the tone. And even when people talk about the first season of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, Encounter at Farpoint still had all the basic elements that made TNG great. It's all right there. You know what I mean? So, you know, you get introdu introduced to Q, all the major characters are there. Um, so, you know, it, it had all the elements that you needed to make the show great. Uh, so the first episode is important, man. It's really important because a lot of people, that's all they're going to do, especially now with the paywall and a seven day window. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. Uh, do we know yeah. do we know if uh, Q is making an appearance in the show? Some people think that 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 reference of the cards might be to Q because of all the Queens. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. And some people think that I also heard people that think that's a reference to the board queen. So I don't oh, know. That makes sense too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, either way, like they're, they're prominent characters. Um, as long as they don't reference uh, Star Trek, uh, uh, insurrection then i i think we're okay, I think we're okay. <laughs> that's that's my bottom of the barrel right there of track movies is insurrection yeah I, that's I, right I, I, that happened that happened the movie mm -hmm. that was supposed to be what the what the next gen crew was doing during the dominion war that's what we got yeah. instead of dominion war we got that <laughs> we got we got a big old joystick out of the center of the the enterprise yeah, no, yeah, so that, right. so uh, <laughs> dude we could have had gem hadar we could have had you know all sorts of stuff but no, no you know you know one. someone should take that scene with <laughs> the joystick and insurrection and cut it with um the uh the star trek five where they're fighting god at the end. <laughs> 
<laughs> they should mash those together as if they all happened in the same, you know, like a time portal opens up and Enterprise comes out and, and Riker and God have it out. You know, why not? Why not? <laughs> a momentary like lap it. in like celestial being thought process. And they're like, yeah, this sounds good. This sounds really good. Let's just do it right here, right now. We're And you know what? If we want to splice those together, let's just put it on a loop on YouTube. Is, is that going to violate any? <laughs> have that on a loop on YouTube? <laughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> I'm sure it does. It, I mean, it, it it violates a lot of things. I mean, what I suggested it should never be done. <laughs> uh, I just, you know, oh lord. Um, you know, I actually bought a script of Star Trek Five at uh, at Trek Vegas. I got a script of, the, of Star Trek Five. Money? You spent mm -hmm. money on this? Oh, okay. I did. I bought it. It's five bucks. <laughs> so I bought it. <laughs> did you buy it from the writer? Or just, was it just? I think it was at uh, Rod's table. You know, Rod, Rod and oh, okay, table. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay. There you go. I got, I got it. Um, well, we'll see. We're going to continue to, you know what I mean, review the episode. So we'll, we'll see how this whole thing unfolds. Um, I am curious, and, and I did enjoy the first episode. Um, I know there were some reviews I saw where they felt like the, the callbacks were fan service. I'm like, of course they're fan service. But that opening scene was so great. I, I love that opening scene. Um, it just, you know, and I, I really hope that this, that the Picard show in its own way, um, I hope it, it does, you know, in some ways what Cobra Kai did. Because um, I felt like Cobra Kai was, was a great continuation. So I mm -hmm. hope at the end of the day it ends up being a fun continuation. You know, even if it does show us, you know, how the Federation gets dismantled. Um, I, as long as they, they do it in an entertaining and fun way, kind of, kind of like, kind of like what Alex said earlier. I'm, I'm. Even if this show does that, it, it's not going to cause me to hate Star Trek because there's so much great Trek that I love. Um, you know, the fact that we're not going to get like one of those great, you know, Kirk moments. Like, uh, what was the episode where the uh, they had the American flag and they they were doing the Constitution? You know, we're, we're not going to get a moment like that, you know, in this at all. Um, but it does <laughs> damage the fact that there's so much fun, you know, original series, next gen. There's a couple episodes of, uh, episodes of Enterprise. I, I love all the Mirror Mirror Universe episodes of Enterprise. I think those are Yeah, great. I like those episodes too. Yeah, those are my favorite uh, Enterprise episodes. And, and, Mirror, Mirror. And, that's a, and that's a very dark vision of Trek, you know, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's an alternate so, universe. So that's true, okay. yeah. So. But, but, you know, like that's, I think that's what's great about Star Trek is it, if I, I'm hopeful in, uh, in another way that this show um, re, reignites the Star Trek fans. I think, you know, we were talking about it earlier. We we're talking about how Star Trek has a tendency to alienate its own fans. It's not as toxic as Star Trek fans where they're like, you know, up in arms and in riots like downtown about some movie. But like that if, if, Picard can help Picard and Discovery can help bring Star Trek back then maybe they can revisit the Star Trek universe and and dive back into the mirror universe or touch upon those sort of societal topics that we saw you know originally and it's like oh this is really cool they're doing it in a nice way everything's optimistic like we've got some rough times ahead but it's all going to work out in the long run no matter what happens like there's always a brighter future on the horizon and and hopefully you know this is just the first step for that well, and, there, and there's a, there's that philosophy or that belief I've, I've heard it told to me with a straight face that that sometimes you have to break something in front of someone in order for them to realize how much they miss it and love it, and then you can you know bring them back into the fold while you put it back together. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, maybe maybe that's also what's going to happen. We're we're going to put it all back together, and and we'll like where we are at the end. So. Yeah. So that's or why maybe I'm this hoping. will be such a huge debacle. Like they'll just sell this all to NBC, and McFarlane will get it, and McFarlane will run Trek from now on. Todd, <laughs> do you mean Todd McFarlane? I think he's going to keep it dark. Yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> Seth McFarlane. I mean Seth McFarlane. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was just seeing the violator on the bridge of the Enterprise there. Oh perhaps. God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's not Harry Mud. It's it's yeah. It's the clown. It's, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, that's a weird way to leave this. Um, <laughs>